guys, it's Justin here, and today it's the day for Cool Freeware Programs number two, <clears throat> the sequel to Cool Freeware Programs number one. So for the first one, uh, it's kind of a successor, um, or a newer uh, version, I guess you could say, of the program I showed you called Volume Touch. Now what Volume Touch was, it was a program that eliminated the need to go down to your taskbar and um, click on the speaker button and raise or lower the speakers. Instead, <coughs> what Volume Touch did was it gave you an option to press a hotkey on your keyboard in addition to your scroll um, wheel on your mouse in order to change the volume. Now, <coughs> what this new program do does <coughs> is <laughs> 3RVX. Now, what this new program does is it gives you the option to just use specific hotkeys on your keyboard in order to change the volume natively. Now, <coughs> Uh, so, for example, in settings here, I have the action um, mute. I have it set to print screen, volume down, set to scroll, and volume up, set to pause. Now, if you look at your keyboard, you'll see that the buttons I chose are very similar to that of uh, Macintosh keyboards. They'll have the dedicated mute, uh, volume up, and volume down buttons. The reason I did that is because I'm so used to using a Macintosh at school uh... that has those specific buttons on there so it's very comfortable for somebody that's coming from a mac or that just wants to feel um, uh... feel very comfortable changing the volume uh... if they don't already have the dedicated buttons on their keyboards so um, in order to change the settings for that it's very easy all you have to do is just click on um, the action there and just uh... press this button and then press whatever key you want so uh, i've chosen print screen Another cool uh, feature of 3RVX is that there's many different skins you can choose. So um, the default one is called Default, of course, and it has a very Mac OS X-like feel. So whenever you do up or down, it'll you know change it accordingly on there, and it's very similar to the Mac, so it emulates it pretty nicely. Um, there's a couple other ones that I'll show you. Uh, not all of them. Whoops. <laughs> there's a couple other ones that I'll show you. Not all of them, but... Um, Here's one called Small Glass. It's this one's kind of cool. It's very minimal on your screen, and you know it's pretty nice looking, nice and glossy. Um, and the last one I'll show you. This is the one I have set for default. Um, it's called Vista 808, and I'm not sure what the 808 means, but I think these are, are um, user-made skins, so they can call them whatever they want. Um, but this one is pretty nice. It goes in this little circle, and I think it just implements the visual volume a little bit better but you can pick whatever you choose whatever you choose okay for my second freeware program I'm actually gonna do um, a not open source program um, it's actually the Zune software if any of you have a Zune which um, if you don't you really need to get one because Zunes are awesome much much better than iPods in my opinion but you know that's not a different argument for a different time anyway uh, even if you don't have a Zune you, you can still use a Zune software. It's a very, very nice uh, uh, media player. So, or at least for music, that is. So, um, as you can see, it's very, uh, very sleek. Um, it's very simplistic, too. So, um, I'm going to go into my music here and sort by artists. And you'll see, you know, it has some nice animations as you might have seen there. Um, but it goes way beyond the eye candy. Um, it's. <laughs> I don't even know what, what else to say. It's just a very nice media player. If you're looking for something that you can uh, play playlists in, um, you know, not just playing one song in a VLC media player and then playing another song, this one's a little more dedicated um, to playlists and such. And it has uh, some nice um, shuffling features and some nice repeat features. Um, it also can handle music downloads because this is uh, for the Zune. And if you don't know about the Zune Pass already, it handles uh, the Zune Pass too. Th what the Zune Pass is is a subscription music subscription service, and what it does is it gives you unlimited downloads per month for only fifteen dollars uh, or fourteen ninety nine, and uh, in addition to that, you get to keep ten of the songs that you download. So technically, all you're paying is five dollars, and you're getting unlimited music that is a subscription base, which means when you stop paying for it, then you can't play the music anymore. But as long as you keep the subscription up for pretty much five dollars a month, you can, you know, keep pretty much and listen to as many songs as you want, which is really cool because then you can download an entire song. If you don't like it, you can just delete it, and then you can just download another one. 
and um, what the Zune software does is it gives you some pretty cool suggestions um, on what songs you like you, you would, might like to listen to. Um, it also does podcasts. There's tons of podcasts you can download. Um, and let me tell you, this program is so much smoother than iTunes, and it just blows it right out of the water, in my opinion. Um, and another cool one is channels. And what this does is it acts kind of like a radio station. So um, certain DJs, uh, these Zoom DJs, um, what they'll do is they'll pick um, music in the specific uh, s s uh, the genres. So, so um, here's a rock, and it's hosted by this guy. Hip hop's hosted by this guy. And what they'll do is every uh, I don't know, like week or so, they'll add new music to it, and then you can just download this and listen to how much you want. If you like a song, then you can keep it. If you don't like it, you can get rid of it. It's it's pretty. S it's really, really pretty sweet. Um, and they automatically refresh too. So, if you you know, it's a really great way to discover music. What Microsoft has been doing is do is uh, this discovery kind of theme with their Zune Pass. Uh, they've given people the chance to li um, listen to new music all the time and to download it, which is really nice. And you know, Bing is called their decision engine. I'm, we'll get into that later. All right. So there's the Zune software. If you're interested, go to www.zune.net and download it there. And I really suggest <laughs> getting a Zune to go along with it, but you do not have to. For the third program, I'm going to go with a web browser. It's called Google Chrome. Now, I know in the last one I suggested Firefox, but this is a very, very sleek uh, um, web browser. So what what uh, you get when you first go into Chrome is a very nice limited taskbar, or sorry, not taskbar, <laughs> um, bar up here. And it doesn't say the name of the program or anything, and there's no menus up here, which makes it very, very smooth. and right up here you have your tabs now they're very easily movable um, gives you some nice animations there and <coughs> there's some pretty cool features so mm, another th cool thing that you can do with this is you can search right from the address bar here so instead of going to google.com and then searching for I don't know potatoes <laughs> um, you could just search it right from here and it'll take you right to Google. I don't, you, you probably couldn't see what that did. Um, but yeah, you can search anything from here and it'll pop up in Google, which is a very nice feature. Um, some other cool things is you can actually rip off tabs. So let's say um, you wanted to compare some products, and I'm going to show off a little bit of Windows 7 here. But uh, let's say I wanted to compare potatoes and sweet potatoes. I'm getting really stupid right now. But I can tear off this tab, and then um, if you're using Windows 7, you can actually compare things, which is really cool. And then once you're done, you can just put the tab right back in, which I think is a very, very cool feature. Um, another cool feature of Google Chrome is that you can go in here, and here's where your menus are. So it's very limited in the menu area, but there's lots of different, you know, you still have all your menu items here. It's just way over to the right here so that you have more room for your tabs and such. Um, so uh, an another uh, cool thing in here is um, incognito and what that does is that it doesn't save your cookies or your cache so whenever you want to um, browse something privately like let's say you wanted to go on Amazon and you wanted to um, buy a birthday present for your dad or something let's say uh, Blackberry Whoever's spending money like a BlackBerry on their dad for their birthday, it's beyond me, but whatever. And you don't want him to see your uh, history, then he won't be able to because it'll c automatically delete all the history once you click the X button. Lastly, a cool feature is you can actually make applications just by using uh, Google Chrome. What I mean by this is, okay, so let's say that instead of opening Google Chrome every time, you wanted to, uh, to go on Gmail, you just wanted to make a Gmail application. So in order to do that, what you would do is just go over here and say create application shortcuts. You'll make a Gmail shortcut and then you can put it to your desktop or start menu or whatever. And once you do that, you'll actually have a Gmail application that's not tied to Chrome in any way. So as you'll see here, it's right there, Gmail. And you'll have your own little Gmail application that is completely independent from Google Chrome, which I think is really cool. In order to uh, download that, just go to google.com slash chrome.